if we look at identity verification and we look at some of the things that um, proving that person who is taking the course is the person that's 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 the one with, that's getting the credit for it. Um, there's nothing we can do to prevent it completely. It's just impossible. Um, it's also impossible to keep us from having students in the classroom sheet. Um, they're going to do it. Um, we don't check IDs every time students walk in the room to take a test. We just don't do that. We have people fill out the, you know, put their names on a test and tear it in. Um, that being said, and I, I give this the akin to, we can build the walls high and then we can line them with shards of glass or whatever we can to put as many possible things, but that doesn't mean they can't get a helicopter and get over the top. You know, there, we can do everything we can to build that wall high and secure it as best as we possibly can. In fact, we're responsible for that. We need to do that. Um, for that purpose, I've, I've employed a couple of different things. First of all, at MCC, and, and we did it at, 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 at uh, FLCC for a while too, um, proctoring is, is, is one way to ensure, you know, having, having identity, ver identity verification processes in place for people to do assessments. I do believe strongly in the need for proctoring, um, a good portion of the grade. And so in my course, the final exam and two of the three regular course exams are proctored. And that would require the student to either come to MCC if they're local or if they're somewhere else, somewhere else in the country or the, the world, uh, they need to find a, an approved proctor, one that they submit currently to me, and then I'm able to contact and try to double check the identity for. And then that person will ID the student and give them a certain portion of time and uh, you know, be with them while they're taking the exam to be sure they're not using uh, the internet or their phone or some other tool that they're not allowed to do not allowed to use. The most common um, proctors have been elementary school teachers or librarians. And to be honest, librarians is probably by far the, the most common. Uh, they've also been from uh, other institutions, other colleges, their testing center personnel. That's been a common proctor that I've often felt very good about. So um, those have been the most common situations. I try to be sure it's not someone related to the student. Um, I had one concern one time. Um, because it was a foreign student, and so I couldn't very easily read the web page of the person who was the proctor. And so I had a friend who happened to be the same nationality and could actually interpret the page and see that it seemed to be legit. I end up sending it to them as a PDF, and um, they'll, so far it's worked out, they've pretty much always been able to scan it back in and send it back to me attached to an email. And I have been, up until this semester, having the, t the, the proctor also mail it to me but as it, as it stands, it seems like that's a waste of postage because it seemed to always work so far for them to email it to me. And now I'm just having them hold on to it for a couple weeks until I, um, so give me a chance, I guess, to grade it and make sure there's nothing missing. That the student says, hey, I did that, but it didn't get sent somehow. So that kind of thing. I guess I haven't really had too many cases so far where I've had to be as concerned. I think the nature of the material in this online course is such that it's a little bit harder for them to, to cheat, um, per se. They really have to have watched my videos, for example, to really know the material, so at least they have to put the effort in. Personally, I am not a fan of multiple choice objective tests on campus or online. Online, they're even more problematic. <clears throat> I just found out that uh, students can Google and get test banks from their uh, course textbook so they can have, with the answers, so they can have your test bank sitting right next to them in their online class. By bringing it up a, a few notches, bringing it up to the level of, of high level, uh, higher order thinking skills and, and high in the taxonomies, um, you know, testing at that level really doesn't afford you the, the opportunity to do as much memorization and cheating as it does proving your creativity and proving your ability to synthesize um, knowledge based on uh, based, uh, uh, products based on the knowledge that you have. From the very beginning, you create an assignment that um, is dependent on the information in the course to complete. I have one paper for my students where they have to use a quote from one of their classmates from the discussion to support an idea in their paper, which makes it very difficult to um, 
Google a, a research paper and turn it in. It doesn't, doesn't really work and it's pretty obvious if they try to incorporate the discussion quote in a, in a canned paper. It's very obvious. It doesn't belong there and it's clunky and awkward. I explain to them everything is open book, obviously. I can't control your environment, but you are not to consult with any other human beings when you're doing this. And I try to make questions that do need unique answers that can't be just copied from somewhere. If your essay assignment is related to the actual uh, material that you've been discussing in the class, it can't be Googled, it can't be um, bought from a paper mill. And they are really showing you what they know and how they learned it also, um, the way they learned it. So I talk to faculty a lot about how to create an essay assignment. To me, if a student can write about your course content, they've got it. Um, being able to pick out a catchphrase in a multiple choice answer tells me that they memorized the definition in the book. It doesn't really tell me that they can use the definition in any, in, or of that term in any meaningful way. Um, so for that reason, both discussion and written, um, formal written papers to me are authentic. There are some things that are just mechanical, intrinsic in the fact that we're using technology um, that exists. We know an awful lot about students. We know an awful lot about, the, the world knows an awful lot about all of us. And there are some products out there um, that work with the LMS um, from a company that we used uh, called Axiom. And the Axiom model is in the middle of a test, a student will be delivered a question, and that question might be, and I'll never forget this one, uh, you owned a boat in 1980, what was the hull made out of? And you have to know what kind, or what color was the hull. Whatever was on the, the, the governmental research, Center for Governmental Research, or the GAO, or whoever had that information on, on file, um, this company had access to all that information. It's public knowledge, public information. But you had to answer that correctly if you were going to get credit for taking that test. And it would just come up arbitrarily. Um, so, you know, which of the following addresses did you live at in 1973? Or, or some, most of our students were born in 73. But, um, you know, those types of verification pieces are, again, another way to build up that wall, put the, put the tough stuff on the top so they can't get over it. But it's just one more element. You know, we've looked at things in some of the committees that I've worked on at SUNY as far as everything from retinal verification to thumbprints to, um, you know, a very popular one is video. Um, you know, have a video cameras so that people can watch them taking the tests. And they all, they're, they're all legitimate. I mean, they're all ways to verify identification. Um, so there comes that point where you have to look at cost barriers um, and time. I mean, time is money. And, and when you've got to have somebody sitting in front of a computer verifying a person's face, that's, a, that's an expensive proposition. Um, but in some cases, it, it, it's, it's critical. There hasn't been an institutional method for doing this for proctor, finding proctors, but I've just received an email this past week uh, talking about how SUNY has put in place something that may well do this for us or help us with this process. So I'm excited to see how well that will work because I think that is an important uh, component of an online course. I don't know that, that everyone agrees with me, even at my own institution, but I feel strongly that we need to have um, proctoring for a good component of the grade in order for uh, it to mean anything. You know, I guess it goes back to, I guess, the discussion earlier about open education. You know, that's one thing, but if we're going to give certification of knowledge, I think we need proctoring in place to know that it's the person that we're certifying <laughs> who has the knowledge. Now, one of the beauties we have that's going on this week that comes up from the SUNY model is the uh, SUNY network of um, proctoring that just got announced this week. Um, which was founded and started down at our friends at Stony Brook, um, where there's a network now of proctoring locations all around the state for online students to go to take the test. Some of them cost money, some of them don't. Um, but it is a, a, a great example of systemness, if you will, where this is something that we can offer as a system. This is something we can do for students, um, and they don't necessarily have to be close to their institution, but they can be at a distance. They can be in Albany taking a course from Monroe. 
and still go get proctored, which is a requirement of any particular class. Not all classes are going to require this. A lot of people don't use you know, those kind of assessments um, that need to be proctored. Most are writing papers and, and doing those types of, um, those types of assessments. So, um, but this gives us a way to do math. It's impossible to do that. Math, you have to sit down in front of something and take a test, whether it's pen, pen and paper or on a computer, but you still have to sit down and take that test. So. Thank you.